So in this talk, I'm going to consider one-sided local extrema. By what do we mean by extrema? Yeah. Extreme. Yeah. Uh, max or min. And one-sided right. means left or right. So there'll be a total of four cases I'll be considering. Max and min from left, max and min from right. Two times two is four. And for each of those cases, I'm going to be trying to determine the sign of the corresponding one-sided derivative. Okay. The left, I'll try to determine the sign of the left-hand derivative. For the right, I'll try to determine the sign of the right-hand derivative. Okay. And let's begin by considering uh, local max from the left. So by the way, there's a separate video where I discuss just this first case, local max from the left in great detail. So you can look at that if you want to go over it in detail. But for now, let's just quickly see. Local max from the left. What can you say about the left-hand derivative? It's positive. Well, or? I will no, no, positive or, or zero. what? Zero. Or zero. Yeah. You never forget that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let's see why. Well, how do you define the left-hand derivative? It's the limit of this expression out here. This limit where we take the limit as x approaches c from the left. Okay, so you have to put a minus here to indicate left. So what's that limit going to be? Well, let's look here. So local max in general means that f of x is less than or equal to f of c. So local max at a point c means that f of x is less than or equal to f of c for x to the, in this case since it's left, x to the immediate left. So what do we have? We have yeah. So we have the numerator is less than or equal to zero. Mm -hmm. What was the denominator? Less than Strictly zero. less than zero. So when you divide the two, what do you get? Uh, greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero. And then what do you have to do? You have to take the limit. limit. And then the limit of something greater than or equal to zero is also greater than or equal to zero. So the left hand derivative is greater than or equal to zero if what? It's local max from left. Yeah, but you have to add something more. So if it exists. Because it need not be left differentiable, but if it is, it's coming straight. Okay, now let's do local minimum from the left. What does that mean? It means f of c is less than or equal to values on the immediate left. So f of x is greater than or equal to f of c for x immediately to the left of c. So f of x minus f of c is greater than or equal to 0. So the numerator is greater than, greater than or equal to 0. The denominator is less than 0. So the quotient is less than or equal to 0. And the limit is less than or equal to 0. If it exists. Yeah. Okay. Now, local max from the right. Let's see. So, what, what can you say about the numerator? I'll hide that. What can you say about the numerator? Numerator is less than, less than or equal zero. to 0. Because f of x is less than or equal to f of c. And the denominator is? Greater than 0. Greater than 0. Right? The numerator is less than or equal to 0. The denominator is greater than 0. And so, when you take a quotient, you get less than or equal to 0. Yes. And then when you take the limit, you get less than or equal to zero if it exists. What if it doesn't exist? Will it be greater than or equal to zero or less than or equal to zero? It doesn't exist. If it, it doesn't, doesn't exist, exist, it doesn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Local minimum from the right. Well, just by the pattern of these, can you guess what that will be without thinking about it? Greater than or equal to zero. Okay. But now let's think about it. So the numerator is going to be what's this numerator greater than or equal to zero the denominator is less than zero mm, or greater than zero greater than zero mm -hmm. when you take so numerator is greater than or equal to zero denominator is greater than zero when you take the quotient you get greater than or equal to zero and then you have to take the limit limit okay and you'll get greater than or equal to zero and if that exists so you have rhd greater than or equal to zero if it exists. Okay, now I want to make a couple of quick remarks. The first is, so so there, there's sort of two interacting things going on. One is whether it's max and min, the other is whether it's what? 
to determine the sign here, what what two things do you need to look at? Whether it's max min and whether it's left or right. Left or right. The max min controls the sign of the what? In here, the max min controls the sign of the, the numerator. numerator, fx minus fc. And the left right controls the sign of the denominator. denominator. And to then together those signs determine the sign of the quotient and if the limit exists, the sign of the limit. So if you change from left to right while keeping it max, the conclusion will change, right? Greater than or equal to zero becomes less than or equal to zero if you change from left to right. Okay. Similarly, if you change from left to right while keeping it min, the conclusion changes. Okay. And similarly, if you fi keep, keep it fixed at left and change from max to min, again, the conclusion changes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so each one, if you change, keeping the other aspect constant, the thing changes. Uh, the second point I want to make is about strictness. So, what do you what do you think I'd mean if I said strict local max? So, if I said, what what would that mean? What what does strict mean? fx minus f, f of x minus f of c can't be zero. Cannot be zero, right? And that basically means f of x, if it's strict local max, that means that f of x is strictly less than f of c. So local max just meant f of x is less than equal to f of c. Strict local max would mean f of x is less than f of c. If it's from the left, then for x to the immediate left, from the right, then x to the immediate right. Okay? So if you do strict, then can you drop the equality signs from here? Hmm? No. No, why not? Are you sure? Why, why can you not drop the Let's just go over this. So, so local max, strict local max from the left. The numerator is now going to be strictly less than zero, right? Because FC is strictly bigger than stuff on the left. The denominator is going to be strictly less than zero. So the quotient is going to be quotient of two negative numbers is going to be strictly positive. Mm -hmm. So why do you get greater than or equal to zero? The limit can still be zero. The limit can still be zero. So you are saying that the limit of something which is positive can still be zero. And that's why if you have these strict cases, you can still get zero. So you cannot eliminate the possibility of zero just because it's strict. So here. Okay, let's now quickly make pictures of each of these, like prototypical pictures for each of these cases. So, so the first one, strict local max from the left. What's that going to be? It's just going to be like, a, one thing you can make is an increasing function, right? You can make an increasing function which is kind of flattening out like that. In that case, you can have a situation where the left hand derivative is, even though it's strict, the left hand derivative is zero. zero. Or, but you can also have this situation, the earlier situation where the left hand derivative is positive. Uh, can you have a situation where it's not increasing, but you still have a maximum from the left? Yeah. Yeah. How would that be? This is a constant. Yeah, that well, well that, that's, yeah, but, but can you have a situation where you have strict local max from the left and it's, it's not increasing? Well, actually, you can have even that. You can have a kind of oscillatory type of increase. So, in that case, you can have a situation where it's kind of left-hand derivative still exists and it's greater than equal to zero, but it's not increasing on the immediate left. Okay? So, so, so this one, the first one, you typically think of it, oh, it's an increasing function. But it doesn't really mean increasing on the immediate left, okay? Saying it's increasing on the immediate left is a slightly different from saying this. Okay. Let's do strict local minimum from the left. What do the pictures look like? So you could have like this. By the way, since it's from the left, the point I'm, I'm, so, I'm sort of considering is the point at the right end. Okay? So you get strict local minimum. 
could have the derivative being zero. You could have uh, this type of picture, or you could have some oscillatory picture. So I'll ignore the oscillatory one for now. Strict local maximum from the right. What kind of picture would that be? Well, you could have this kind of picture. You could have this kind of picture, right? And you see from these pictures that these are true, right? And strict local minimum from the right, that means, well, you could definitely take something which is increasing on the immediate right. Increasing and concave down on the immediate right. So you could have these kind of pictures. So you see in all these cases, you have this, in these pictures, you have left-hand derivative is greater than or equal to zero. Here you have left-hand derivative is less than or equal to zero. Max from the right. Right hand derivative is uh, less than or equal to zero, and min from the right, right hand derivative is greater than or equal to zero. Okay.